Okay, we're live. All right, good morning, everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining us this morning um, for the topic of consistency and routines. Our presenter today is Kathy Hecker. Um, and Kathy is our early, child early childhood education director here at Westside Montessori. Kathy has been working at Westside for 26 years. Um, she spent eight years in the classroom and she spent the remaining years as an administrator here at the school. So we're very excited to start this top, to present this topic, um, really with it being the beginning of the school year. Consistency and routine really helps children to transition into school and to be happy. And so we're gonna go through this presentation and talk about the importance and some of the great takeaways that you can do at home. So when you're ready, Kathy, you can begin. Great, thank you, Helena. It's nice to be here. It's nice to be talking with all of you about consistency and routines. You know, we've really seen since the children started three weeks ago, how much consistency in the routine of school has really made such a difference. You know, when you think about when they first started out coming into school, those first few days of car line and, and what that felt like for you as a parent, what that felt like for your child. And you can really see that growth now in three weeks because here at school, we're offering them that consistency, we're giving them that routine, and it has really made all the difference in the world. So, so, you know, when we throw off any little bit of routine, you know, kids really react to that, and that's okay. It's okay to know that, you know, some days they're going to have a meltdown because something was a little different. And, um, but we just need to understand the why. And, you know, we are creatures of habit. Many of us are creatures of habit. And so we like knowing what's coming at us. And when something just throws them off a little bit, um, that routine, you know, you, you didn't go through the same exact steps that you would have when you leave the house in the morning. And then it just kind of throws them into this whirlwind that they have a hard time getting back from. So it's okay. All we can do is do our best to give them the same type of routine every day and know that if things go a little different, it's okay. They, they will learn how to bounce back. And sometimes that's good for them. They don't, you know, they need to know that if that routine gets off a little kilter, that they're going to be okay, that they can bounce back. Um, so, but having some sort of routine is really good for them. It helps keep them on track. It helps them know what is coming. You know, here at school, they know that when they arrive in morning car line, someone will get them out. They get into their classroom. They hang up their backpack. They hang up their jacket. Um, when you're in preschool, you're changing shoes from your in outdoor shoes into your inside shoes. You're coming in and washing hands, and then you know you're choosing work. So those routine pieces are really key in helping our children be successful for a great day and great start to their day. Kathy, so I do want to ask you a question. You know, I feel like we, in the beginning of the school year, we have, you know, and every parent feels this way when your child goes into the classroom for their first time and you see the tears and you feel this, like, am I making the right choice, right? Can you just talk a little bit about the normalization process in Montessori and, and the time frame? Like, what, what is the time frame in which it, it could, should take kids to kind of make their way into a new routine in that process? Sure, it's hard to see your child sad. It breaks our heart. I mean, I have worked here, you know, 20 some years. And when both of my boys started, um, specifically my older one being that first child and having mom all to himself for that beginning time, um, he had a really tough transition into school for several weeks. And it hurt my mom heart like you would not believe. And so what I found was important, you know, sometimes you have to separate your heart from your head. You know, your heart is breaking as a parent because your child seems sad to go into school. But on the other hand, your head tells you they're going to be okay. You've made a good choice by, you know, choosing the school. Um, you have people that love your child and that will take good care of your child. So I, as a parent, would work really hard on putting a smile on my face telling him that, you know, he was going to have a great day, that I would be back, and then I would turn around, and I would, you know, drive away or walk away, and then I could cry, and I did, 
and you know what it's okay <laughs> like we all do it and um and he was okay he did adjust he did okay um i will say that this is what our third week of school and our preschoolers are, are all week long have been walking themselves down to their classrooms. They have one of the longest walks of all of the children and they're doing it all of themselves. You know, they'll tell you when you get out of the car sometimes now, I can do it by myself. Fine, I don't need to walk you down the hallway. Like you can do it by yourself. So um, the toddlers even, many of them are, you know, are coming in and they, they don't need you to be comforting them. They're like, you know, coming in or, you know, opening the door, they're putting their backpacks away, and then they're off and they're choosing work. And um, so, it, you know, it sometimes can take a couple of weeks, but everyone's different. Some kids come in from day one and it's fine. There's no problem. They just separate flawlessly. Mm -hmm. Other kids take longer. My son took a lot longer and his teachers can tell you it was a long process until he became okay. I mean, we're talking like many, many weeks and he still did and he did it. You just have to know that they're going to be okay and that if they're not okay and the teachers can't help them, that they will call, they'll call you and tell you, hey, this is what's going on. And we've, we've done that with parents. And sometimes the parents will say, okay, I'll, I'll come over and pick them up early. And sometimes the parents are saying, nope, thanks for the phone call, but I'll see you at dismissal time. And it's like, okay. So, um, you know, my son was the opposite, Kathy, where he just went right into the classroom. And I had that moment of like, why are you okay? Like, why aren't you sad? Like, I'm sad. <laughs> um, so the one thing we do talk about often with Carline and with our COVID policy this year, it kind of, and last year, it's made it really seamless, is it's much easier for um, the child to leave the parent than the parent to leave the child. So um, obviously parents this year don't have the choice. Carline is what we do, but are we, are you seeing children adjusting more quickly now that Carline is how is, is the norm versus the parents coming into the building? Right. We have, we have seen that, especially yeah. for the toddlers, you know, when you walk, especially in the beginning of the year, when a parent walks the child in, you know, oftentimes, you know, the parent is having a hard time separating. Let me give you that extra hug. Let me give you that extra um, kiss goodbye. You know, we need to say goodbye five times over again. And that's the, those long goodbyes are so hard on a child. When we can take them out of car line and just say, we're gonna go now. And we take them and we go, generally they're done crying by the time they walk in our front door not even to their classroom, by the time they get into their front door, they've pulled it together. So that's, I know as a parent, that's hard because you're driving off and they're not seeing that their child has stopped crying. But we have found that here at the beginning of the school year, they are settling in much quicker because they don't have that parent there kind of reminding them. Cause you know, your body language says a lot. And parents don't mean to, like none of us mean to send that message of, oh, I hope it's going to be a great day. Um, but kids sense that. They know that. So um, that has been one of the beautiful things about Carline is, um, you know, letting them separate, let the child leave you mm -hmm. versus you leaving the child. For sure. The next part is knowing that home is different than school and that's okay. You know, you're not going to recreate school at your home um, word for word. And you know, home is different. Home is um, where children play, where they relax, you know, mom and dad are there and you know, it's just your comfort zone. And school is different. You know, we really work hard to set up our classrooms so that they look like a home. You know, we want our classrooms to feel very warm. We want the, the lamp to be on and to have beautiful artwork on the walls. Um, we don't want it, you know, you'll notice that when you either have toured or when you can come in this year and start parent observations later in the fall, you'll see that our classrooms don't look typical of what you would expect, um, maybe in your mind of what a toddler classroom looks like or a, a preschool classroom looks like. Montessori classrooms look very, very different. 
and um, we want them to look and mimic home with you know the beautiful artwork that's down low and everything is at a child's size um so you know but we can make our school that way where um the sinks are low the toilets are low home is not like that um you know we're not going to install a sink and a toilet in our home that's meant for a toddler size so what we're going to do is you know give them that routine of okay you need to wash your hands let's get the step stool and bring it over and let you do that um, one of the things that we always did at my home when my boys were younger was, you know, they they come in right away, they lined up their shoes. Um, at that time, they just lined them up right in the hallway. We had hooks that we put in um, on our hallway that were low, so that as soon as they came in, they were able to hang their backpack up on the hook so that it wasn't laying on the floor. So coats and backpacks went on the hook a lot easier now with all of those command strips mm -hmm. that you can put hooks on walls and not even having to drill into your um you know into your wallpaper or into your drywall so um but giving them a place as soon as you come home where do your things go and um just so you know it's not mom and dad's job or a babysitter's job to put their things away you know they do that every day here at school they come in, they put their shoes away, they hang up their coats and their backpacks. Um, they may need help and that's absolutely okay. If your little one needs help, you know, hold, you know, putting their backpack up on that hook, great, help them, but don't do it for them. You know, encourage them to be independent. Um, the other thing that we always did when we came home was wash our hands because they wanted to make sure that the school germs stayed at school and so, you know, that was just a routine and they always knew that so that, you know, and then when you got ready in the morning, your shoes were there, your backpacks there, your coats there. And it's just really easy to get going in the morning when everything is organized. Um, I feel like when I hear you talk about the home environment, Kathy, it kind of makes me think of the freedom within limits concepts, right? So like in Montessori, you know, we say that children have freedom within limits. We follow the child. We don't follow them off the cliff, right? There are firm boundaries in place. But I think like with the consistency and routine versus like home environment, school environment is, you know, when the kids are here at West Side, their routine is very, very much structured. I mean, it's very much the same. They have their work period. They have their outside time. So they know exactly what to expect. But I think with at home, with the schedule, there should be freedom within the limits. Like you should be able to, be, be more flexible at home because that is where you play and that is where you relax, but there should be a very consistent flow to your evenings, to your mornings, and they should look somewhat similar, but you have to be flexible still. Um, and that's when you see your children really emotionally balanced and self-regulated is when they have that consistency at home, but yet still the freedom because you can't you can't expect for yourself as a parent to be such a perfectionist that everything you do is the same because then it's not fun. You know, you have to have game nights and things like that. So I feel like when I hear you talk, it's that piece of school is very, very, very consistent. There is that freedom, but at home, you have to have more of the flexibility within your schedule. So you can have all of those family moments, but still have consistency for your kids. So right. I feel like in the routine, just with dinner, you know, making sure that Kids should, should sit for a meal. They know how to sit down. You know, when you leave the table, that means that you're done eating and then you're done for the night. Um, you know, here we don't graze during snack time. Everybody sits down, you eat their snack, but you know, our kids here at school, they can get their own placemat out. They can get their own dishes out when they're done. So even the youngest toddlers, when they're done, they're picking up their, their cups and their plates, they're putting them back there on the tray that's sitting in the center of the table. They're clearing their table space and they can do that at home too. You know, um, you know, making sure that they're putting their things, you know, their food spaces away or sweeping up their floor. They're not going to do it perfectly, but at least they know what the expectation is and that helps out, you know, just makes life easier. We're all tired when we go home. And, you know, having some of those routines in place will help you enjoy your evening so much more if you they know what to expect. 
you know, same with, you know, they can get whatever toys out they want and, you know, have a great time at home, but then they should be expected after, you know, they're done choosing their toys or their work, they just put them back where they found them, you know, and that will just help everything builds on each other. And so that will help in the end if, if children know the expectations, you know, I'm a person that really likes to know the expectations of what's coming at me. And when I do, I just do so much better. So, you know, and, and children are the same way. So um, the next piece is just um, that stability piece. You know, what I was saying before, we know what um, stability does for us as an adult. And we just need to be honest and recognize that children need the same thing, you know, if we are not stable, if we're having a rough day or we're just kind of a fly by the seat of our pants kind of person, it's going to be hard for children to learn how to do that transition. So, um, you know, having those consistent expectations where they know what to expect, they know what's coming at them really does help your days go by so much quicker. And again, it's that don't beat yourself up if, if something happens that day and, and things change, it's okay. You know, we're not looking for perfection. What we're looking for is consistency. And, and we know that, you know, there, there'll be days where that is a little different. And um, I think as long as we all try to, to do our best and to give them that structure, then everyone will be in a, a much better place. So we talked a little bit about the um, morning and nighttime routines. And, you know, I, well, I talked about, I guess, when you come home, what that routine is. But, you know, starting your day off, if you are organized in the morning, it will make your drive into school so much more pleasant for the most part. Um, you know, what is it when they get up? You know, what are their expectations? Do they need to get up and, um, you know, go to the bathroom? brush their teeth, and maybe it's make their bed. And maybe by making their bed, it means, you know, you just put your pillow at the top of the bed and you make sure that your sheet or your blanket and your animals are all on your bed. You know, you know, keeping it realistic to the age of the child. But, um, you know, when they come down, when they come for breakfast in the morning, making sure that, you know, they're sitting down and um, just so that there's that expectation of, of what is coming next. Um, when it's time to go, do they need a heads up and say, you know, you know, in a couple of minutes, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to put our shoes on and um, get our backpacks on. Um, some kids, especially younger kids, you know, sometimes they do better with pictures. If your mornings are tricky, you know, maybe you're taking a picture of, you know, what you expect. Do they need to brush their teeth? Then you take a picture of a toothbrush. Do they need to get dressed? Then you take a picture of just an outfit. And you could have that on a piece of paper that you can re that you can refer to. So when they wake up in the morning, if they're not sure what to do, all you have to do is point. You don't even have to use words. You can just point. Say, okay, they need to be brushing their teeth. Okay, and sometimes you know kids like that checklist so they know what what is happening. You know the same thing for the evening time. You know, um, you know if your family does bath, you know every night, you know before bed. Um, you know, or we, you know, after a bath, then they get lotioned up and then they read a book or two or sing a few songs and then they're getting tucked into bed. So, um, you know, whatever that looks like for your family, there's no one right answer. You know, every family is going to do it a little bit different and that's okay. It's just making sure that whatever you plan and whatever you expect fits your family and that it's doable, that you're asking for something that is realistic keeping in mind, you know, your child's age. So I guess I jumped ahead, got excited about mealtime, but, um, you know, mealtime is important. It's um, having a good breakfast and making sure that they're off to a good start with that. Um, and then when you're together at the end of the day, I just think it's really important to encourage those children to sit down and eat. Um, that's a great time to connect with your child. It's a great time just to hear, kind of talk about what's going on for the day. Um, like I said, here our children are sitting in a at a table eating their food. 
Um, we are using real plates, real silverware, real cups. Um, the plates often are like the corral plates, you know, plates that aren't going to shatter the way that uh, maybe a glass plate would shatter. And our cups are realistic. Um, you know, we have found for the really little ones, shot glasses work really, really well. They're just the right size of liquid and they're generally really thick on the bottom so that they're not going to um, shatter when they fall off the table and they will. Um, or, you know, if your child can handle the shot glass, then like um, oftentimes like little glasses, like even a candle votive glass okay. is a, just the right size for their hands. It's the right size of liquid. Um, also so, those, those yogurt cups, there's, I forget the brand, it starts with an O. O-U-I or something. Yes, I that. use those at home and they're thick and, they're thick uh, and they're thick yeah, they're really good. I was actually, so I went to a, a restaurant um, this is a while ago. And I asked for a shot glass for my son and the waiter kind of looked at me and I'm like that, it probably isn't a normal thing that most people ask for, for their children. But, <laughs> um, so I wanted to touch on the mealtime, um, topic too, Kathy, you know, oftentimes, so I do the tours here at West side along with Anne Spenny and, um, you know, I, I often will have, have parents of young children that say, there's no way my child will sit and eat. And I think that was the other point is the consistency piece is um, when you first start a new routine, it can be hard, but you have to be really consistent and you have to sit there with the child and let them know this is the expectation. This is the boundary and we don't deviate from it. And I think, um, and I know, you know, I've been so lucky to work here the whole time my child's grown up and he's five now that I've had the support of Westside to help me along the way. And it's not, I think it's one of those things. Sometimes it's not always common sense to, you know, if your child seems squirmy, you're like, okay, well, let's move to the next thing. But it's beautiful when you see those consistencies of no, this is the expectation and you do it a few times, then there's, they, they know that that's the reality. This is what we're doing. And it then just organically goes into your routine. So if there are any parents watching and think that's just not doable, I just trust me, it is doable. You can do it. If, if I can do it, you can do it <laughs> um, mentality. But um, it is the most beautiful thing in the classroom to see these little tiny 13 month old babies sitting around, you know, having a beautiful snack together. And it's so peaceful. And if, again, if you just make that the expectation, they will follow. They just need us to guide them so that they know what the expectation is. So um, I just really felt like I needed to echo that point because I've, I saw it in my son, it's still within him. He's so beautiful with his manners and it's because what he learned here that I just supported again at home. Um, and it's one of those things that your children are so capable of amazing things with the consistency and reinforcement. You're right, Helena, it doesn't happen instantly. It doesn't happen the first time and it's not gonna happen the second or third time necessarily either. But if you set those expectations and you get that routine in, they will get it. You know, what snack look like on day one here is different than what it looks like now at the end of the third week. Yeah. They are really getting it. They are learning when a teacher says, would you like water? Yes, please, or no, thank you. And they're giving them the sign language for that if they don't have the words. So, you know, they hear that every time they sit down for snack. Would you like, you know, apples? Yes, please. No, thank you. You know, it's just that modeling over and over and over. And then all of a sudden you're going to look up and one day and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, they have it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, but those are lifelong skills, you know, teaching your child manners to say yes, please, or no, thank you. I mean, that's what I hear from parents that our kids stick out. Montessori kids stick out. They're different because those are the expectations that we set for our children here. Um, this is our routine. You know, when you get up from a meal, you don't just leave your plate for someone else to take care of. You ate off of that plate you put it away. Now you might just be putting it in the basin next, right next to you or on a tray or the older toddlers are walking it over to the sink basin. But it's that you know routine of I'm done eating, I push in my chair and I take my you know plate to wherever um, in your house that makes sense. So um, that's where, you know, and it is, you have to also know sometimes mealtime is a very um, dramatic time. like. 
we're all tired, and we're hungry. So those are two things that are working sometimes against you. And so I think as an adult, it's just, it's important to remember that routine and just try to be, you know, also reasonable and flexible and know that, you know, sometimes they're just tired and we're going to have to go with it. But you keep doing it day after day and it, it will, it will definitely get better. We, our children here are proof of that. Um, the natural consequences. Um, this is hard. Mm -hmm. This is one of the hardest things I have found as a parent is um, those consequences. And um, it's so easy to, you know, kind of look the other way and say, eh, I'm just going to let that one, let that one go. And there are times where you have to pick your battles for sure. But there are also things that they need to understand that, you know, if I do this, then this will happen. You know, if I leave the table at mealtime, then I'm done eating and there is no more food. I don't get to come back after watching TV for 10 minutes to finish my food. So, you know, we all need to know those bound, those, those consequences. I mean, we have those as adults as well um, for actions that we choose to do. So I think just trying to be consistent, and I know here it's so much easier for us at school to say that because the children in these classrooms don't belong to us. Um, when it is your own child, it is completely personal. When you are a teacher in a classroom, it's not nearly as personal. That's someone else's child. And so I, will, I would try to do that and remember that when, um, especially when my, my boys were young, if you could take your kind of just pick yourself up and take yourself out of the situation and just say, pretend this isn't my child. <laughs> How would I, you know, and go through it that way. It's easier. It's easier on your heart. Um, there would be days I'd come into school and I would feel like, oh, I did a good job today as they're bickering in the car because I didn't engage. I didn't, you know, buy into it. And I, I stayed strong and kept that consistent behavior. And then there were other days where I'm like, oh, I, right from the beginning, I, I, I engaged and it just got out of control. Um, and that's natural and that's normal. And we all do it. Even everybody here who works with kids and we all know better, we still do it. But I think the biggest piece is just trying to maintain that consistency. Kids feel more secure when they know their boundaries and what is going to happen. They may not like the consequences, but it makes sense to them because they will know that when I do this, this is always what's going to happen. And it helps shape their behaviors as well. I don't know if I'm explaining that very well. That, no, it makes so much sense. And I have to share just a little story about my very first like moment in parenting where I was like, I did the natural consequence, right? Um, my son was supposed to get a haircut and he did not want a haircut. He was very upset about the haircut. So I said, okay, you don't have to get a haircut. And we would always go next door and get a cookie from the coffee shop after we would get haircuts. And so we left the haircut place and he started walking towards the coffee shop. And I said, we didn't get a haircut today, so we can't get a cookie. And I got in the car and looked back at him and I could see all of the connections in his head. And I had that moment of like, that was a good natural consequence, you know, even though I wanted a cookie too, but, um, it's just some of those, I think it's such a learning process and with natural consequences, there's no like rule book, like, okay, this is how you handle this. But it's like, if your child's throwing food, then they're showing you they're done eating. So then you take their, their plate away. And just all of those things where I feel like um, it's such a learning process. And you, like you said, Kathy, you're going to have days when you're like, I did it. And then other days where you feel like, oh, this was not the best choice. And I think that's just parenting, right? Like we're always going to have that no matter what the topic is. So um, but yeah, okay. the natural consequences are there everything. <laughs> so the thing to keep in mind is your child will not starve to death. Mm -hmm. If they throw their food, you take away the plate because you're showing, you know, by saying you're showing me that you're done eating and you take away their food and they can eat at the next meal. They're not going to starve to death. They're going to be okay. They're going to be hungry, but they're going to remember. It doesn't take very many times of taking the food away and saying, oh, you're showing me that you're done. And so they realize like, oh, when I throw my food, 
my plate goes away and I have to leave the table and I don't get to just come back. Um, it's hard on the heart for sure, like absolutely. But in the long run, you get there so much faster. You know, it only takes a time or two until they learn that and then it stops. Where if you kind of keep allowing them, oh, all right, you know, I'm sure you're hungry, come on back. Then they've just learned, oh, all I have to do is throw a fit and they're gonna give me what I want. And that muscle memory of theirs is so strong that once you do that, you know, they're gonna keep testing it. And, you know, the first time they may cry five minutes and you give in and they're like, oh, well, I keep crying, they're gonna give in. And they can, they can go for a very long time and you just have to be, you have to be strong and know that what you're doing, you're doing it for the right reasons. They're not always gonna love it, but you know that it's for the right reasons. And also those yogurt cups make really great wine glasses. So if you're emotionally <laughs> struggling, go ahead and get the shot glass out for yourself and allow it to take place. <laughs> that is your, you know, your reward for yeah. enforcing um, yes. those natural consequences. Because <laughs> again, it, that's the biggest piece I think we all have to remember. This is not easy. Mm -mm. There's nothing about parenting that is easy. And every level, I mean, my boys are teenagers now. It's still not easy. Like, you know, you think, oh my gosh, I've been doing this forever. Nope, because every age is just a whole new set. And you have to just figure out what are those consequences as they get older. I mean, they still need it. Yeah. Um, every age level needs that. It's just, you're going to have to adapt as a parent and figure out, okay, so this consequence, they've kind of outgrown or it doesn't make sense now for this age group. So now what do I need to do? And sometimes, you know, as they get older, you can even ask them and then you can have those conversations. It's hard to do as a toddler, but yeah. they get there. Um, the technology, um, you know, it's so hard now. Um, you know, when my boys were little, you know, they're almost 18 now and 14, you know, we just didn't have technology the way that you know, parents like the Helena that you now have. Right. So it's just a different world and we just have to adapt. But um, really setting those limits with technology, they really need those expectations. Um, yeah. And, and technology can, it's, it's easy because um, we, it, technology is on your laptop, it's on your phone, it's on the iPad. I mean, it's the TV, it's, it's everywhere. We're so connected to technology now and that's a wonderful thing to be able to be connected. The other part though is figuring out how much is too much. And so um, sometimes some of our natural consequences at home with the boys was, okay, well then you're not going to have, you know, tech time or have TV time. And boy, when you took away that for a couple of days, they were completely different children. Mm -hmm. um, so it just really went to show us what that can do um, to a child. So whatever makes sense in your house, because um, that's different for everyone and it's not our place to say one way or the other, but just you know, really thinking about what is realistic, how much time do they really need on technology? and just setting those limits. Um, I think on some of the, and Helena, you'll know better than I will, but I think there are certain devices or certain apps that when they've used it for so many minutes, whatever you preset into it, then it just kind of shuts down and it's it's just done and it's over. Yeah, um, and the one thing that I, I was gonna mention, so my son is five um, and he loves Blippi. Um, if any of the parents know Blippi out there. So how I was able to get my son to emotionally regulate and also like know when it is time is he has a set amount of time that he can watch Blippi in a day. And it's usually the same time after school. And when it is time, when that time is up, I go up to the TV and I say, okay, it's, it's time to say goodbye to Blippi. Um, so I, he, he knows when it's ending um, he knows the time limit and that is consistent. And so obviously, you know, it's different for everybody, but for me, that is what I found to be the most helpful is to tell him when it's time to say goodbye. Um, and then we move on quickly. And prior to that, it was a little bit of a meltdown, right? So I feel like if you're consistent with the amount of time and you're consistent with 
giving your child the cue um, of when it's time to be done, they will, they will transition easier. And I learned that kind of just through um, working through the meltdowns, which is probably the same for all parents. Like that's probably not going to work for everybody, but um, I found consistency with technology and how to bring it into our home in a way that is productive and also keeping emotionally regulated when it's over. So that actually leads perfectly into this next slide about family time and just being careful not to let technology take place of your family time. You know, it's so easy to give them that tech piece when you're in the car on that drive, but that drive could also be a time to connect and, um, and talk with your kids and really find out what's going on in their lives. So, you know, just making sure that there are time in the day that it's just your time. It's your family time. Um, you know, we want kids to know that they are our priority. And, okay, so my kids will probably say, this is the pot calling the kettle black because, you know, I'm on my phone too. So I totally, <laughs> totally get that. But, um, you know, you want kids, like when you pick up your child at the end of the day, and you're on a phone call or you're doing whatever and your child is getting in the car, like, you know, they should be acknowledged. They should be, you should be saying, you know, putting all of that away and saying, hi, you know, how was your day? Tell me about what snack you ate or where did you go on the playground? And, you know, and, and all of that stuff. Um, if, you know, make sure that there is time for your family, because I will tell you as a child in his senior year of high school, it goes so fast. I can still remember the day that um, John came home and I was looking at him and he, you know, he could just, he, you know, between, you know, sitting him on my lap, he, you know, barely even touched my knee laying down because he, you know, they were just so tiny. And I remember feeling like, oh my gosh, she's gonna be a week old, you know, like tomorrow. And oh my gosh, like a week already. He's not even days now, it's it's a week. And I can still remember clearly thinking that. And now all of a sudden, like we're at our senior year of high school. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I know that you you hear that all the time. Oh, it goes fast, it goes fast. And um, it doesn't feel like it always goes fast in those those tricky times, but it really does go by so quickly and they're going to be out of your home before you know it and so really making sure that there's time where you can be a family and to let your child know that they are your priority and that they count and that they matter in your life and it's so easy when we get busy with work and all of our extra things that we're doing and um and it's not that those things are bad by any means but it's just trying to find that balance between, you know, I've got my work life, I've got my social life, but I also have my family and, and they are important. So it's just, um, you know, kids need to know that they, they count. And that's one way to do it. It's just making sure that there is that, that family time with them. Being patient, you know, it takes a long time to learn something new. And I think we've kind of talked about that, um, Helena, that, it takes a couple of weeks sometimes to get into that new routine and just offer them some grace and courtesy and offer it to yourself as well. Um, because as much as your child needs it, you need it too. And um, when you change something new, you know, I would not run out tonight and make five different changes to your life. You pick one thing, you do one thing, get that as part of your norm, get that as part of your routine, and then you move on to the next thing. So um, just giving them time to adjust, giving them the grace and courtesy that some days it's going to go well, some days it will not, and they will get it. You know, have faith and don't give up on them. They, they can do it and they know they can do it and they want you to know that they can do it. Um, and so that patience just can go a really, really long way. Children all do it at a different pace too. You know, if your neighbor or your best friend's child was able to pick up a routine, you know, quickly, you know, it's okay. Great for them and know that your child will get there too. Um, and not comparing them to your, your coworker's child or anyone else. Your child is your child 
and they are an individual and, um, you know, think about a skill that you've learned, you know, sometimes you've learned it quickly, quicker than your, the rest of the group. And other times, you know, you were the one that was getting there, you know, closer to the end and either way you got it, it's, you've done it and um, your child will too. And the last piece um, is just knowing that, you know, it's tricky. It's tricky to do something new. It's tricky to do something different. But um, in the long run, it is so beneficial. It's such a positive experience for you and your child. And it just can make your family life just that little bit easier sometimes and um, that it is worth doing. So. Well, thank you guys all so much for joining this conversation. And thank you so much, Kathy, for taking time out of your busy day to present on this topic. Um, we have a lot of families on the call. So the one thing, you know, me as a mom, that I found amazing support in this, this West Side community from teachers and administrators. So never hesitate to reach out to us. If there's something you're struggling with at home, we are here for you. We're, we're your extended family. I mean, you're sending your babies to be with us and we're a big part of their lives too. So if there's something you need help with or advice on, you know, connect, connect with your teachers, connect with us and we're all in it together. It takes a tribe and we're all a tribe together. So um, thank you all for joining. And if you have any questions, definitely follow up with us. We're always here to help. Thanks, Helena. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys.